Trojan Philly, Trojan Philly, how's everybody doing, man? You, SCJ, and we're here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. Listen, we want to get into this Stanford preview, and we want to kind of break some things down and kind of let you guys know how we feel about it. I want to give you my score prediction, and I want to give you how I think the game is going to go and the advantages that we that we have, and I think that we're going to be in some good shape, man. So you guys hit me in the comment section on this one. Um, like, share, subscribe, USCJ32 on Instagram, USCJ32 on Twitter. Now, before we get into that prediction, did you guys happen to hear the interview yesterday coming from Eric Gentry? Shout out my man Kashim on Instagram, inbox me, sent me this, man. He said, did you hear what, uh, excuse me, what Eric Gentry said? And man, Eric Gentry, he is an absolute, as he was giving an uh, interview, Eric Gentry is a warrior, man. He's one, he's a he's a throwback player, like a Lawrence Taylor linebacker mentality-wise. This guy's mentality is different, man. He said, if I wasn't playing football, well, if I wasn't getting paid for football, if there was no NFL, this is not verbatim, but he said, if there was no NFL, I would play this game for free. I love this game. And then not only that, he said, we didn't just come to beat Rice. He said, we didn't just come to be Stanford, but he said, we came to win a championship. I like that attitude. I like that mentality. And I think that attitude, that mentality is going to trickle down to the Stanford game, to every game, the Fresno State game, the Utah game, the Notre Dame, UCLA, Oregon State, it's Arizona, Arizona State. It's going to translate all the way down to every – because I believe Sean Lee has that same attitude. I believe Caleb Bullock has that. I believe our whole defense has that attitude and mentality and i'm telling you he said these guys are like a brotherhood man so you guys hit me in the comment section you want you tell me what you think about that man eric gentry he's a young guy he's only a sophomore and he's already a leader now let's get into this prediction i looked at some things as it relates to stanford and uh it was something in particular that i found out as i start looking at these numbers and i start looking at it quarter by quarter it looked at the first quarter they scored but let's get into some of these numbers you guys tell me what you think about this Here's some of my preview of the Stanford-USC game. Second quarter, Stanford scored 21. And then in the third quarter, no points, zip, zero at all. Now, you go into the half and you're telling me you're up 28-7. to seven, and, uh, and you see Colgate scored in the second quarter. You're up 28-7. to seven, And you're telling me you don't want to – you think that game is put away? That game is very much in reach. However, it, it tells me that either Stanford was getting locked down or they, or they pulled out their, their, their second string, which is hard to believe. I don't believe that they, they pulled out their second string because the game is only 28-7. to 7. You want to put that game away at least at least at an, uh, 35, maybe 38 points. Make sure you have that game put away. Then you bring up your backups. Now, it, it's just interesting to me that Stanford couldn't even score in the third quarter. I wonder if anybody ever no, even noticed that. Uh, and if that, that's the case, if they had struggles with that defense, they're going to struggle with USC's defense because USC's defense has way more athletes um, um, than uh, Colgate. And I, I, would, I would argue that Rice's offense, and for us to be able to hold Rice's offense to 14 points, I would argue that Rice's offense is better than, uh, than, than the uh, a Colgate offense. Um, and so, you know, you guys hit me in the comments section. Uh, you guys tell me what you think. And I would argue that Rice's defense – Maybe better than the Colgate's defense as well, but so you see, they did score in the third, uh, the fourth quarter. Uh, score ended up finally be forty-one to ten. But you guys hit me in the comment section. You guys tell me what you think uh, about this one. Now we want to go to uh, the overall stats of, of their game. Now, if you look here, you see total yards for Stanford was four ninety-six, um, which is a good amount of yards. Colgate uh, theirs was two eighteen. Passing yards for Stanford, 328. And, and I believe McKee, uh, Tanner McKee, had uh, 308 yards total. Uh, uh, Colgate had 59 yards passing. However, when we come over here to the Russian, you see Russian Stanford, 168. EJ, you know, EJ, uh, EJ Smith had most of those yards. I believe he had 118, two touchdowns. Um, he had most of those yards. And then Colgate, 159. Now, to me, that's significant because I said in this game, if we can establish the run, 
and be able to put up more rushing yards than what we had. Uh, Cause I think Caleb Williams accounted for 68 yards of our rushing along with his uh, 200, and, um, 200 and plus yards passing. So if we can, if we can establish a run game, I think, I think we really can be in some good shape. And not only that, establish the run game, but then control the clock. Well, we'll see that number once we come down here. So penalty, Stafford had two penalties for 20 yards, Colgate, uh, six penalties for 30 yards, and then turnover Stanford for Colgate one. Time of possession, here it is right here. Time of possession, Stanford 26.49, and then Colgate 32.06. Uh, now, why is that significant? Because I think that if we establish the run, and it's several reasons why we need to establish the run. Establish the run because we need to slow down the clock. Uh, slow, slow down, well, well, speed up the clock, rather. We need to speed up the clock, and the only way we can do that is by staying on the field. Now, we don't want to just stay on the field, just stay on the field. We want to run the ball. We want to wear them out. We want to get them tired. And we want, we want to feature Relique Brown, uh, Travis Dye, Austin Jones, uh, Darwin Barlow. We want these guys to be able to establish their footing uh, as it relates to the run game. And not, and not only that, we don't want... We don't want to allow time of possession to go uh, to Stanford. And then we want our defense. Our defense needs to be rested. If we come down there and score, now I don't mind scoring, uh, you know, doing a quick shock and all, maybe the first or second drive. But then to, to do that all game, it's going to wear our defense out if they have to keep going on the field. So, so let's control the clock, I think. Control the clock and give us maybe 30 minutes, 30 minutes of uh, possession time. Uh, you know, have that flip around the way it is with Stanford right now. Colgate has 32.06. Stanford has 26 uh, as it relates to the clock. If we can control the clock, establish our run, allow our defense to rest, and get these guys in, I think I think we'll be in uh, some good shape. Now, three players that I think we need to get going in order to make this thing happen as it relates to uh, – uh, time possession and, and, and be able to make turnovers happen. I seen last game Corey Foreman. Um, you know some of those some of those throws were altered by uh, the Rice quarterback. Some of those plays were were um, uh, interrupted. And I think some of the things that now Corey, as uh, as John alluded to in our first video, uh, as we reviewed the game, Corey uh, was coming into some of those plays wrong, but he made adjustments and you started seeing pressure uh, as it relates to Corey putting pressure on these guys. Uh, the offensive line and uh, changing the trajectory of the quarterback's play. So this Corey is one of my guys that I think is going to be a major impact player, and we're going to need him to really step up in this game and add this pressure. He came on at the end last week, and I, I think we started seeing some things. And so as a result, I think Corey is going to be one of those key factors as it relates to the defense. My next, Max Williams, this guy is my next one. He looked very comfortable next to Kalen Bullock, and I'm telling you, uh, I think these two are a heck of a combination. Max was already good as a nickelback, but to see his level of comfort in that in back there with Kalen Kalen Bullock, you just didn't see a whole lot of activity going on as it relates to um, anybody posing a threat. I think Max Williams could could pose to be an incredible threat, somebody who's going to uh, shut things down and be able to read coverage as well as. Uh, as well as be able to make plays, even as Caleb Bullock did. So listen, uh, uh, Caleb did, Bullock did last week. So Max Williams, Corey Foreman, I'm, I'm expecting these guys to do some big things on the defensive side. We already know what Sean Lee, we already know what Gentry can do, and uh, we, we know that these guys are going to make some plays. But these are some other guys that hadn't necessarily been just called out who, who can make some plays and make some things happen as it relates to our defense. On offense, I'm expecting these guys right here are big uglies. Our offensive line, PFF ranked them one of the top five offensive lines in the country right now. I'm expecting these guys to impose their will on Stanford's uh, D, uh, D, D line, interior play. I expect that to open up a whole lot for um, our run game and our pass game, and, and they're going to protect Caleb Williams um, on a, to, a next le to another level. So, so you guys hit me in the comment section. You guys tell me what you think. Uh, our big uglies, our old line, I'm putting these guys as our breakout. These guys are going to be the guys who I expect to hold the things, everything down for us as it relates to everything that's going on inside the trenches. And my next guy is going to be this guy right here, Relique Brown. 
as you guys know, he is a special player. And uh, it just came out yesterday on Twitter. Relique said, look, I'm fully healthy. I feel good. He just wanted to comfort everybody. He wanted everybody to know that he was good. Him, of course, along with Austin Jones, Travis Dye, Darwin Barlow, I think those guys can establish their footing. But this guy right here, I think this is going to be Showtime, Showcase, Mr. Relief Brown. And I think this guy right here can have a tremendous game against Stanford and along with our big uglies and be one of the breakout players of the game uh, now that he said that he's fully healthy. So you guys hit me in the comment section. You guys tell me what you think about that. Like, share, subscribe. USCJ32 on Instagram. USCJ32 on Twitter. All right, so that is my preview. That's what I believe um, is going to be our impact players. All those guys on the offense and all those guys on defense. I looked at, I just looked again at Fox Sports, um, their, their betting lines. I'm not a gambler, but just, you know, you kind of want to use those things just to kind of kind of gauge how everybody's looking and viewing um, as far as their intel as it relates to uh, this matchup. So they still have us as a nine-plus favorite. Um, to go in Stanford and win this game. So you guys hit me in the comment section. I want everybody to drop this score. Drop this score in the chat box. My score, my final prediction is going to be 43-24 USC. Hit me in the comment section. I want to know what you guys' score is going to be. Like, share, subscribe, USCJ32 on Instagram, USCJ32 on Twitter. Fight on, fight on, fight on.